Hello folks, how are you doing? My name is Stephen Sheridan. I'm a careers advisor here at the Northwest Regional College. So today I am in our 3D printing room and our engineering faculty. We have a range of engineering courses such as level 3 and where you can progress to a foundation degree and work-based programs such as the HLA. We have a range of engineering courses here at Northwest Regional College. You can do a level 3 extended diploma equivalent to 3A levels. Upon from this you can progress to a foundation degree in either mechanical engineering or electronic and electrical engineering. We also have work-based programs such as the higher level apprenticeship whereby you will be actually placed with an employer after an interview. On top of that we have other programs part-time, level 3 diplomas, uh, HNCs and HNDs so be sure to check them out. We are now going to hear from one of our employers of the HLAs, Sean Goddard from DuPont. Today I have a Sean Godfrey who is the uh, operations manager at DuPont and uh, has been with them for 30 years years and today we're going to talk about uh with sean about the origins of dupont what they do and any advice to give to uh our, our students here at the college uh going forward so sean thanks very much for joining me today all right you're very welcome really, really appreciate here. it so uh sean so to give me a little bit of background obviously um i know dupont has been a, a, around a, a long time um but could you give me a wee insight into the origins of dupont and you know the the uh the the actual um the sector that it's involved in? Yeah, well, I suppose you're right. We've been around a long time. Uh, DuPont as a company was founded back in 1802 by a French immigrant who, uh, who set up a gunpowder factory in America. And they very quickly became the, the largest gunpowder supplier in the US. Uh, they moved, after about 100 years, they moved from gunpowder into chemicals. And in the last 100 years, the, the company has transformed a number of times in the kind of bioscience, uh, and, and those type of arenas. More recently, I uh, think back in 2016, uh, DuPont merged with a, a, another major chemical company called Dow Chemicals. Uh, so we merged in 2016, as I say, and then split up into three independent companies uh, going forward. So the part of the company that I'm involved in, DuPont, is, is uh, four main businesses. And the Kevlar plant is part of the, what we call the safety and construction business. And we manufacture Kevlar down at the Maidown site, just outside Derry. Excellent, excellent. And um, I was uh, understand as well, it's the uh, 60 year anniversary um, of DuPont in the city. Yeah, so the company, uh, I think when, when DuPont first decided to move outside of the, the US kind of borders, uh, they, they looked for a, a site. Uh, one, one thing they wanted, I think, was English speaking. Uh, they needed a lot of water and as you know in Ireland we have a lot of water uh, and they also wanted to come to a place where there was an abundance of you know a, a skilled workforce so came to Derry uh, first plant outside of the US uh, so this is the first plant that, that DuPont decided to invest in and we've been here 60 years so this year actually 2020 is the 60th year that we've been on the site uh, we've seen many products come uh, at the site, so we've manufactured neoprene, uh, which people know from wetsuits and that kind of thing. Uh, Hypalum, which is another type of synthetic rubber used for bonds and liners and that. Uh, Lycra has been here for a long time, but the Lycra company is now independently owned. Uh, and then Kevlar, obviously, is still here and manufactured by DuPont. So we're one of three Kevlar plants around the world. Amazing. And how many, how many uh, staff would be um, working at DuPont at present? So there's about 100 and 150 DuPonters that work here. Uh, it's a 24 seven operation. So uh, three, six, five days a year, we're always manufacturing. And then we have about 40, uh, what we call supplementary contractors who, who support our operation. And then obviously there's a lot of maintenance, uh, piping, electrical contractors that we bring in and out as we need for, for projects and for maintenance type work. Amazing. And Sean, you were also saying as well, in terms of um, obviously Northwest Regional College, we have a lot of students uh, in apprenticeships and um, foundation degrees, mechanical uh, engineering. Um, is it true that a lot of, of students have, have uh, you know, worked with you in the past? Yeah, well, we have, you know, we currently have, I think it's six uh, people that are going through the modern apprenticeship. So for us, a number of years ago, it used to be, you know, the, the traditional either process mechanical apprenticeship or electrical apprenticeship. Uh, and we have evolved that to the point where it's now what we call a modern a modern engineering apprenticeship. So the guys come out multi-skilled where they can do both process and electrical control work. Uh, so as I say, we have about six 
And I think over the years, you know, the number of people that have gone through that apprenticeship scheme are running into the hundreds, you know. So uh, as the site goes bigger, obviously there were more. But every year, every couple of years, we bring in apprentices. apprentices uh, and, you know, currently about 60% of the management staff at the site started in shop floor, shop floor roles. So they were either operators or mechanics. Uh, and quite a number of those people would have come through the, the apprenticeship scheme uh, at the college. Fair enough. And in terms, uh, Sean, of, of advice for, you know, uh, students with us currently who are thinking of working for a company such, uh, you know, as big as DuPont, is there any advice you, you would give them in terms of, you know, uh, you know, obviously working for you and career progression and things like that? Well, I think, you know, that the apprenticeship and the, and the higher level apprenticeships, we also have a higher level apprenticeship going on at the moment in IT. Uh, they're a great way for people to learn while you earn, if you know what I mean. So you're, you're in work, you're getting those life skills and you're also uh, getting the certification that goes along with it. So you kind of have the classroom training that gives you the HND, the HNC, whatever level you decide to train up to. Uh, and you're getting the life skills where you're coming into work and you're seeing how, uh, you know, a manufacturing company like ours, how the wheels turn in manufacturing. So you're really getting both sides of the, the equation and that that can only be good for people. Uh, I think the other thing about it is the apprenticeship, you know, for people that do apprenticeships, uh, they get the, they're equivalent to the first year of university degrees. So some people that do these modern day apprenticeships can go on and we have people that do it, they go on to do degrees. Uh, you know, so we currently have a couple of people that that are, are working and studying degrees at the local universities that have come through some of those apprenticeships, you know, so uh, it's a great foundation. No, it's brilliant. Uh, what I would say is that, you know, the, the straight route from school to university isn't suited to everyone. Uh, and the apprenticeship is a great way for people to find their way uh, in education and industry and start young. No, Bernard, no, great advice, Sean. The, the higher level apprenticeship, the, you know, the earn while you learn approach, you know, is, is um, you know, it's been going now for about four years at the college as long as I've been here. And, you know, it's an opportunity to stay local. You, as you say, you get a foundation degree, you can continue on the degree level, but most importantly, you get experience and an insight and they're working for a company such as yourself. And as I say, we've got um, found it in foundation degrees, higher level apprenticeships, which are the same level, but the Airway Learn approach has, has become very popular. So no, thanks for that. And uh, finally, um, and, uh, Sean, you know, in terms of your um, advice to students who are thinking of, of, of working, you know, what, what qualifications and, you know, even at, at, at you know, um, secondary school level or who are, you may be uh, finishing up in the college here, what kind of skill, skills as well as qualifications do you think they really need to be honing and developing now as they, as they think about the future? Well, think for us, you know, we're in the manufacturing industry and we're, we're a science-based company. So the STEM subjects are obviously important yep. for the type of work that we do. Uh, but as well as that, I always encourage people to take whatever experience they get right through their schooling. Uh, and that includes part-time jobs, whatever they might be, you know, so get out and get life experiences that uh, that supplement your, your educational experience. So, you know, pe people that, that come out of school or out of university at 22, 23, that have never worked a day in their life have missed an opportunity because they haven't picked up those life skills as they go along. So you know, I would encourage people to try and get the education. Uh, it's, it's easy carried with you for the rest of your life, but as well as that, try and complement that with real life experiences because, you know, going down a pure academic route, I, I think sometimes people are missing the opportunity to get those experiences.